Having a smaller or cheaper gimbal doesn't mean you can't create Hollywood level shots. Gimbals are amazing tools that allow us to create really cinematic shots and the only limitation is your imagination and creativity when it comes to using these. Here are five Hollywood level shots you can create with your teeny tiny gimbal. Shot one, the high to low crane shot. Typically to get this kind of shot, you need something like this, a big jib rig and a little bit pricey, a little bit hard to carry around, not very practical for what we wanna do if we're on a short budget and we wanna just go, go, go. However, the benefit of having a teeny tiny gimbal is we can have teeny tiny solutions like this lightweight carbon fiber Manfrotto B3 advanced tripod. I'm sure you guys may have seen on TikTok or Instagram that guy who had a similar setup with like a Crane 3S and like a monopod or tripod or something. And as he was bringing it down, it disconnected. So make sure you tighten everything super duper tight, but that's another benefit of having a teeny tiny gimbal is that because the whole payload, the camera and the gimbal is much lighter, you don't really have to worry about if it disconnects, so long as everything's super tight, you should be all right. Once you're all set up, now it's time to execute the shot. As you can see, we've got the subject high up, kind of midway down these large set of steps, and we've got the camera pointing straight at them. And what we're gonna do is basically follow their movement until they exit the frame. We're gonna go around the staircase, and then we're gonna match where they're going to enter once they get down the stairs enough so that we can see them. Then we just follow them down as they go down the stairs and kind of meet with their eye level to end the shot. Obviously, one of the trade-offs from having like the big jib rig that I mentioned earlier compared to our DIY teeny tiny gimbal jib rig is that I can't really see what the camera sees. I could kind of struggle to see what was on screen, but a lot of it was kind of guesswork and I couldn't really fully control the focus. Luckily, the S5 II has really good autofocus, but it'd be nice to have more precise control or at least be able to fully see what it sees. The first way is to get a wireless video transmission system, put the transmitter on top of the camera or on the gimbal somewhere and have that connect to a receiver that's on the bottom end near where we're holding the bottom of the tripod. And then that's connected to a monitor so we can see what the camera sees. But then of course we have to put batteries on the transmitter and the receiver and the monitor. And then of course there's cable management it kind of becomes a bit of a faff and in all honesty, I, I made this jib rig because it's easy and that made it quite a bit more complicated. So here's another solution. My S5 Mark II has a great Lumix app that allows me to connect to it wirelessly and I can control everything that the camera does and I can see everything that it sees, which of course is the main point here. And uh, to, to get this on the bottom of the tripod, I would just tape. Tape's probably a good friend. I'm sure there's a phone mount accessory out there to use, but but, I, but tape. This is how I'd suggest you do it. But the irony here was that the app wasn't really connecting to my camera. Um, Lumix, you guys, you guys need to work on this app. <laughs> so giving it a couple more attempts, we end up with a nice looking shot like this. Shot to the Super Parallax. Now this looks like something that should be impossible or at least very difficult to do because it requires using a very long telephoto lens. But thankfully, we're using strong gimbals. They may be teeny tiny, but they are mighty. <laughs> what am I, Thor? They may be small gimbals, but they are very strong. Here we have a choice between the RS3 Mini and this can hold up to two kilos, but I'm actually going to be using the new Gion Cinepeer Weeble 3E, which can hold up to three kilos. This means that we have a lot of clearance to use a larger telephoto zoom lens. Now you may need to use some counterbalances to get the balance correct, depending on how much space that your gimbal might have. What have we got a super long telephoto lens for? Well, we're gonna be filming something really far away, and this is gonna create a really, really unique parallax shot. A parallax shot is basically where you're going one direction and you're passing objects and, and you're just following a subject. It looks really cool. It's kind of just a play on like depth, essentially within your shot. It's very, very interesting. It can be challenging to do, especially with a very long lens, but if you can do it, it looks sick. 
The next thing is, even though we're using a gimbal and that will stabilize most of the axes, we're still gonna have a little bit of up and down movement because one, the gimbal doesn't stabilize that, and two, we're using a really long lens. So any movement that we do do with running or whatever is going to be accentuated. So to combat this, we're going to <laughs> Use my electric longboard from X-Way. Just, uh, well, for one, a little bit more movement and speed and it's a bit fun. So that will also make the shot look cooler. But then two, it gets rid of the up and down movement because there will be no up and down movement. And the last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna be changing my focus settings from continuous to manual. Now you could probably just slow down your autofocus sensitivity so that it doesn't shift as much when you're having things pass in front of you or whenever you're passing them. But I'm gonna set it to manual once I've got it set onto my subject just because it's a lot easier and I don't risk having anything shift the focus at all. And now that we're all set up, let's go shoot. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Whoa. <laughs> that was amazing. That was sick. Shot three, the push and pull. For this shot, we're gonna need our jib rig again, but we're not gonna be doing anything from high to low. No, instead, this time we're going to be pulling or pushing our camera through objects to create interesting shots. Whilst it's pretty easy to look for anything that creates some sort of circle and put your camera through that, you also wanna create an interesting shot. And you can see here where I try to create this style of shot, it didn't really look good, it didn't work. So instead I looked around to see what else I could use. And whilst there was this interesting looking gear shaped thing, there's actually something else that caught my eye. There are these small archway shaped hole things at the top of the lookout point where we're at. And if you put the camera through it, you can see the buildings and the canal and the boats. And it looks interesting, especially with the sun out. And then I thought, hmm, if I then pull the camera through that to reveal my subject, George, as he's now, oh, look, it's he's at a viewpoint looking over at the things that the camera was just looking at. That makes sense. That looks interesting. So I went with that and created this shot. This kind of shot is pretty easy to do. Don't just stick your camera anywhere or push it through or pull it through anywhere just because you can. Find something that would add visual interest and also make sense for your video. Shot four, monkey see, monkey do. Now I called it this because it's just a really straightforward, simple reminder of what to do with this shot. You see what the subject is doing? Match that with your camera movement. This is most useful when you want to accentuate the subject's movement within a shot. It's really easy to make something look really boring, but to make something look interesting just takes a little bit more work. Now, let's take a look at this shot here of my friend George pulling up his camera and taking a photo. Yeah, that was really boring. Um, but let's, let, you know, let, maybe let's try a different angle. Maybe it'll look better from a... No. Uh, it's, it's still really boring. What can we do here? Because clearly changing up the angle isn't working. What we need to do is add some camera movement and what better camera movement to do than to accentuate the movements he's making. So we're gonna start off here at his feet, follow him as he walks and raise the camera up to his camera. Then we're gonna follow his hand around as he brings the camera up to his face to take a photo. Now, this is a very simple camera movement. It just requires a little bit of planning between you and your subject, a little bit of communication and directing them when to move, what thing at what time, so that you and they move at the same time, but done correctly and you get a sick looking shot just like this. Finally, shot number five, the 3D orbit. So this is a very clever take on the classic orbit shot. If you don't know what that is, it's just where you rotate around your subjects, like just around them, that, that's it. What you've been seeing here, that's, that's the orbit shot. Very cool shot, but very like, you know, uh, simple gimbal shot. It can take some practice to execute, but the 3D orbit shot, this is an interesting take on it because essentially it's the same thing, but you do it on a different axis. And the way the full-time filmmaker crew did it was they did it on the Z axis. So we're gonna do that here. Now this took me many tries because your positioning is going to change very slightly. And hopefully your camera has good autofocus like my S5 Mark II because there is a lot of like up and down and like getting it correct. But the best way I found was to first of all, set my gimbal to POV mode. Secondly, 
I would hold the gimbal in a way that allowed me to twist it in my hand. So I had my bottom hand ready to twist the gimbal so that it was easier to just rotate it as I was rotating around the subject, if that makes sense. And then thirdly, instead of watching the screen the whole time, try to watch where your camera is the whole time and just keep the space more or less the same. I often found that this gave me a more accurate shot compared to trying to watch the screen the whole time, which you actually can't. There's going to be a certain point in your rotation movement where you can't see the screen anymore because it's blocked by your arm. This was an issue I had multiple times before I realized, hey, why don't I just not watch the screen and just watch where the camera is pointing? Now, if we combine this shot with a speed ramp, we get a cool shot just like this. five Hollywood level shots you can do with your teeny tiny gimbal. What did you think? If you guys have any awesome gimbal moves that I didn't cover in this video, share them in the comments below, just below that subscribe button. And if you guys wanna see more about the gimbal that I used in this video, check out this video over here.